Hello everybody, my name is Mal. I am the zookeeping interpreter at the Trailside Museums and Zoo at Bear Mountain State Park. And today we're going to be talking about winter wildlife survival. I'm here at Whispering Willow Wild Care in Schenectady, New York with my friend, Pop at the Barn Owl, to talk to you about some unique adaptations that owls have to get them through the harsh winters in New York. Have you ever been walking in the snow and found a set of prints like this? And you think to yourself, something happened here. You hope it was a miracle, but probably not. Now, owls are what you call a bird of prey or a raptor, meaning that they hunt and kill other small animals to survive and consume. That means they are carnivorous. They have all these amazing adaptations for hunting, including sharp talons and big old eyes. But what the barn owls are going to be using that makes them such excellent hunters in wintertime are their ears. Now looking at an owl, you don't immediately see their ears. And that's because they're not visible. They're hidden under all their feathers. Birds actually have very reptilian-like ears. They're just little holes in the side of their head. And what barn owls have are called asymmetrical ears. Meaning, while we have one ear on each side of our head, the barn owl has one ear on the top of their head and one ear on the bottom. Now, why might that be? That's so they can triangulate the sound from around them, meaning they can hear what's up above and what's down below. And what they're looking for in the winter is what's down below. Now, owls' ears are super great. They can hear about 10 times greater than our ears can hear. And they can hear a mouse or a shrew or a vole under two feet of snow. And that's what they're going to be hunting in the winter. Because in the winter, all the rodents are going to go under the snow. They're going under the snow because it's going to be insulated. It's going to keep them warm. And it's also going to hide their sound, which is why the barn owl needs to have such great hearing. Now, barn owls in the winter, they're going to be conserving as much energy as possible. So they're going to pick up a roost on a tree branch that's pretty low, and they're going to listen. And another thing that's going to help them listen are their facial feathers. These are called facial ruffs, they're facial discs. They have that cute little heart-shaped face. And that's not only for style, but that's actually to hear because their face is gonna act like a satellite dish. And it's gonna channel in that sound to their ear on the top of their head and on the bottom of their head. And they're gonna use that and do instantaneous trigonometry, something that even I struggle with. And they're gonna triangulate where that rodent is moving underneath the snow. Another thing that's gonna help their little satellite dish heads hone into exactly where that rodent is, are their neck vertebrae. So humans, we have seven vertebrae in our neck. So we can turn our head, this is about as far as I can turn my head, maybe about 180. Barn owls and owls have 14 vertebrae in their neck, meaning they can swivel their heads around 270 degrees. So they really can hear surround sound all around them. Now the reason for that is, I can do this. Pop it can't. That's because their eyes are in a fixed position. So they need to rely on turning their head to hear for sounds around them. Now these guys are used to hunting in complete darkness. So hidden prey to them is no big problem. They triangulate where that mouse is in the snow and then they pounce and they're gonna come down talons first. This is the business end of the owl and they're gonna grab that rodent and dinner is served. These guys are such great hunters that in, in the course of a year they can eat up to 2,000 rodents. Talk about never needing to call an exterminator again. These guys are nature's best. And another thing when these owls are coming down on these mice, they're coming down on silent wings. Barn owls have serrated feathers, meaning the tips of their wings are ruffled. So that's going to reduce turbulence in their flight and they're going to come down quiet as a mouse. Now let's get a good gander at the feather of a barn owl. If you see here, you can see all those little tiny serrations that are going to make the barn owl's flight just so silent. Aren't barn owls amazing? Now let's check out some adaptations that owls have for when they live up in the Arctic Circle. Now check out Whispering Willow Wildcare's Queen of the Ice, Noel the Snowy Owl. Now Noel's not on my glove because despite being the bird whisperer, 
not every bird whispers back to me. So Noel and snowy owls are not natives to New York State, but they will come visit us sometimes in the winter. Noel is a true winter survivalist because she is from the Arctic Circle and she is adapted perfectly to surviving there and hunting. And the first thing you're going to notice is her coloration. She is white and that is to blend in with the tundra and the snow. That's her very own camouflage. Another thing you're going to notice are her thick, thick feathers. Now, snowy owls are the heaviest owl in North America. They can weigh up to four to six pounds, which you may not think is a lot, but considering birds with their hollow bones, that's pretty chunky for a bird. And a lot of that for them is going to be their densely packed feathers because they can survive up into negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how cold it gets in the Arctic. And these guys are ground birds. So when it comes to the snow and the ice and that wind barreling down at them, they're gonna be down on the ground and they're gonna take shelter behind a tree stump or a rock and try to shield themselves from the wind. Now let's take a closer look at those tootsies. While most owls are naked on their legs and talons, Noelle is feathered all the way down to the tips of her toes. And Noelle is really more feather than bird. If I stick my finger into her chest feathers, you can see that her feathers are about as thick as my pointer finger is long. Snowy owl populations depend very heavily on the populations of lemmings, which are a small rodent that live up in the Arctic. These guys' diets consist of about 80% lemming. They'll even line their nest on the ground with the fur of lemmings to act as an insulator. Now, on summers where the lemming populations are particularly high, that's when a lot of baby snowy owls are born. And when winter comes around and it's time for these first year snowy owls to hunt and find their own territory, their parents kick them out. They say, find a territory of your own. And sometimes they do a little bit of world traveling. These guys, have been known to migrate as far south as Hawaii, but typically they're going to be hanging out around southern Canada, northern New York, and maybe more of the Midwestern states. Now, right now, as I'm filming this video, there is actually news of a snowy owl in New York City right now at this very moment, and he is causing quite a stir in the bird community. Now, the first snowy owl to ever really be mapped on his migration pattern is Baltimore. And can you guess where they tagged him? Now, Baltimore's migration was basically a cross-country road trip. He went all up the East Coast and he stopped in just about every major city. It's crazy. These guys have a true wanderlust. Now, maybe as we learn more about tracking snowy owls, we can figure out exactly why it is that they make this winter migration. And on years when tons of snowy owls come down to New York State, that's called an eruption. Not like a volcano eruption of snowy owls. That's eruption spelt with an I. And birders just go bananas for snowy owl eruptions because they're such gorgeous birds. Who wouldn't love the chance to catch these majestic yellow eyes in their spotting scope? Truly amazing creatures.